from the University of North Dakota, this is Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Hello and welcome to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy. Back-to-back -back Broadmoor trophies for the Fighting Sioux. It was like the Ralph South in St. Paul as North Dakota provided great excitement and drama in defeating Colorado College and Denver to win the WCHA Playoff Championship. Got a great show for you. Although he's been slowed with injuries this year, Carter Rowney has showed signs that he could become the scorer he was in the Alberta Junior League. You'll get to know the Sioux sophomore in our player profile. And there's only been two Sioux hockey numbers ever retired. One, of course, is Ralph Engelstead. The other is Terry Casey. Former teammates and coaches remember the Sioux All-American in our feature story. So stick around. Coach Haxtell is going to give us his take on a couple of intense contests in St. Paul. But before we talk to the coach, we have a question for you. What is the longest game ever played by the Fighting Sioux hockey team? That answer and more when we come back. You're watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Baller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. They're coming. Seems like from every wireless carrier. You may have heard them already. The doubt casting, the empty comparisons, while they shout them at the top of their lungs to try to blur the lines. In the end, just ask yourself, does the network work? This is America's largest and most reliable network. Verizon, built so you can rule the air. This is going to have a $300 million impact. North Dakota Spirit, the campaign for the University of North Dakota. Join us. Before the break, we asked you, what is the longest game ever played by the Sioux hockey team? Well, the answer is a five overtime, 102 minute, nine second game with the Sioux beating Minnesota five to four. Well, I thought we were headed for that record on Saturday night. Coach Dave Haxtell, welcome to the program. Uh, and it certainly could have went that way if, it, uh, if the goaltenders had stood up uh, the way they were standing up. But congratulations on a Broadmoor championship, a playoff championship uh, and a Broadmoor trophy in St. Paul. I don't know if you recognized it, Coach, but there were a few Sioux fans in attendance at the, uh, at the uh, XL Energy Center in St. Paul. I know you guys are real intense and focused on what's going on with the players, but there were a few. Wow. Huh? It was, uh, yeah, it was an absolute uh, sight to behold. It was a great weekend. It was uh, amazing, the number of Sioux fans that were, uh, that were there, and uh, the charge and the energy that they brought into that building was pretty special. Well, there were a couple of games prior to that. Of course, it was a new format with two games on Thursday. The moon was playing on Friday afternoon and Friday night. And there were a couple of games that were maybe a little of the stale variety. You guys made sure that that didn't uh, go through Friday night because that game with Colorado College was really something. Wasn't yeah. it? Our, our, our two games were a little bit different uh, in terms of the flow of the game, but the CC game was certainly up and down. It starts here with, uh, with a goal by Dan Christo. Great middle lane net drive by Taylor Dickin to, uh, to set that up uh, and uh, that kind of set things off for the night. Nice to set up Denny Cristo uh, back into the lineup to get a goal first shot and everything. Kind of a nice story there. Yeah, nice to have uh, to get Dan back in the lineup. Uh, get two games under his belt. Now he has to really continue uh, the hard work of getting back into top 
condition as we go into next weekend. And how about Brent Davidson? He gets a couple goals on the weekend, including this one for the senior who's earned his playing time, and it's great to see a guy like that scoring goals too. Isn't it? Well, and the goals that he scored are, are, are you know, are goals that uh, simply, they're, uh, they're really a product of repetition. Davey works uh, harder than anybody on those little areas of the game. One was a catch and shoot, he got away quickly. The other was a wraparound. This goal by Brad Malone that shows you you can't give up when you see that arm of the official. Sometimes some players will give up a little bit or relax a little bit, but your guys didn't. Did well, especially when uh, the rule change now allows you to stay on the power play. And I thought that was a great response, uh, you know, that we had to a five-minute call against us. We just, didn't, you know, we really concentrated on the job at hand. And then we saw Matt Fratton get the game winner on a great play from Evan Trupp and Ben Blood. And another Matt Fratton game-winning goal, and he's just chalking them up, and more and more things are going in his favor, hopefully for a Hobie Baker award. Well, Matt's really pushing things in his favor. He's doing a great job. He's working hard. He's uh, working two, uh, two ways on the ice, and he's making things happen. Again, you had uh, a few people in the stands again, fighting Sioux fans for Saturday night's championship game against Denver, and they actually get on the board first here. Yeah, we got uh, we got very sloppy in our D zone. We had uh, everybody puck watching, and uh, the Denver forward snuck in from up high and jumped into a hole, and they made a great play, and he, uh, he Jackson finished it off. And again, it's uh, Danny Cristo, the benefit of a, uh, almost looked like the Denver player, uh, Nick Shore, wanted to, <laughs> was trying to guide that thing in, but. Yeah, Bad he, break for them, good break for you. Get pucks to the net, get traffic, get bodies and chaos to the net and good things will happen. It was uh, a game that took a turn to the goaltenders being uh, the outstanding players in that game, didn't about halfway through the game, I think, really. Yeah, both, uh, both Britton and Arundel were tremendous throughout this game. Uh, you know, great, great A opportunities both directions and especially as we went through overtime, those guys took over. Uh, in what was a real entertaining hockey game. Yeah, it certainly was, and then uh, finally finished off with again in the second overtime with, with Matt Fratton and getting the, the game-winning goal and a great play by Evan Trupp. Great play by Evan Trupp. Great play by uh, Che Genaway to, to get that one-timer away across his body and, uh, and to get it on net, and then uh, that puck uh, didn't land right on Matt's tape. Uh, he had to make a real good play. It landed out of the air basically on his tape. He adjusted to it and he made no mistake. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That looked simple that you just stand there and finish the play off, but that puck was bouncing around and it wasn't an easy play for him. He, he had to adjust his body and he had to time it as that puck hit the ice. And that's the only way it would have went in the net is if he got it away as quickly as he did because Britton was over on it pretty quick. Another playoff championship. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Coming up, it's uh, down to the Sweet 16 and there's no real Cinderella's in this year's field, it doesn't appear. And former Sioux All-American Terry Casey had aspirations to play for the 1968 U.S. Olympic hockey team. A tragedy ended that dream. The night that his retired jersey was raised to the rafters at the Ralph, there were many fond memories. Stay with us. Our feature story on number 12 is coming up next. And now your UND and me starting lineup. Kate Wilson, sophomore, English education, Rochester, Minnesota. Ben Carlson, senior, environmental geography, Forest Lake, Minnesota. Sinkee Slater, senior, sociology, Minot, North Dakota. Jesse Wolf, senior, communications, Bula, North Dakota. Be what you want at UND. Go.und.edu. When I play around the golf, most of the time it feels natural. My goal's always been to be one of the few people to say that they can shoot in the 60s. The strongest part of my game is putting and chipping. When I was a junior in high school, took second in state, I believe golf is the greatest game ever. There's gonna be ups and downs, and there's nothing you can do about it. You have to have fun while you're playing golf. I think I can make it enjoyable for anyone. I am Justin Gerke, and I'm a golf expert at Shields. information about summer hockey camps, go to FightingSue.com or call 701-777-6595. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive. 
where graduates succeed, where ideas are born, and research is driven by imagination. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. The Fighting Sioux men's hockey team has retired only two jerseys in its history. The first is Ralph Engelstead's number 23. The second is number 12. This season, the UND Athletic Department held a special ceremony to honor the retired jersey and the man who wore it. In the corner of the Ralph Engelstead Arena, above the clatter of the crowd, hangs two quiet numbers. One for the late Ralph Engelstead, and one for another player named Terry Casey. Terry was a tremendous co competitor. He was a, a good skater. He saw the ice, uh, would move the puck around. Terry hailed from the great state of Montana. He was an accomplished athlete in high school, but one particular skill made him stand out. Terry was a bona fide player, excellent skater. His background was that he was a figure skater too. Every once in a while we'd get him out there and he'd come out and do some jumps and everything else for us but he was like I said he was a tremendous skater. Terry's exceptional skating and hockey skills were matched by his personality. Well he was a, a, a jovial person he just one of these people that always had a smile on his face. Very friendly a, a, per, a people person usually always happy uh, in a good mood really appreciated his teammates. He played for the Fighting Sioux from 1963 to 1966. His senior year, he was captain as well as the lead scorer. His outstanding performance was sure to take him far. So here we had a player that went on to become our captain. He was an All-American, almost won the scoring title. And then he went on to uh, play with the United States national team, 66-67. And of course, uh, he was getting ready to be on the 68 U.S. Olympic team. He was sure to be on that team. But he never got the opportunity to realize his Olympic dream. Terry died in a car accident in July of 1967 at the age of 23. He was survived by his wife, Nancy, and their unborn daughter. I think it was just such a total shock that I don't think I comprehended it for, for a while. Nancy named their daughter Terry. This ceremony gave her the opportunity to soak in who her dad really was. I've heard some fun stories tonight, you know, for somebody that you've never met to, to hear stories really, really helps to gain an understanding about, you know, what kind of person he was and what kind of personality he had. It's been 43 years since Terry Casey passed away, but he is far from forgotten. It's, it's just comforting. It's just to know that he's still thought of and remembered. Terry's legacy lives on in the history of the hockey program and the hearts of those who knew him One, two, three. and in the rafters through jersey number 12. Terry Casey was smaller than most hockey players. At 5 foot 8 and 150 pounds, he was considered by many to be the best pound per pound player in the country. His teammates gave him the nickname Moose. Not because he was big, but because he played big. Well, there were plenty of plays to take a look at from the final five, including Evan Trump's magic show, can you call it? His career highlights at UND might have to be a two DVD set. And the MVP did what MVPs do. In fact, Matt Fratton did it both nights. That and more coming up when Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey continues. This is a place where innovation abounds, a place where dreams come true, a place where creativity is a way of life, a place that fires our soul. Join us for the North Dakota Spirit Campaign. Together, we will shape the future of UND and North Dakota. Yeah, it's great, a great boy, a great destination. 
nation. Green is great for We don't call the grant for nothing. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. Watch the crowning of a new NCAA Men's Frozen Four champion April 7th and 9th on ESPN and ESPN2 in high definition. For information, visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head hockey coach Dave Hackstall. Coach, the final five is in the books. You win the WCHA Playoff Championship, the Broadmoor Trophy, led by your uh, MVP candidate, uh, Matt Fratton, who scored the game-winning goal both nights. There were those who said, uh, you know, he could win a Hobie Baker Award. We touched on this earlier by his performance in that weekend and the upcoming weekend in the NCAA tournament. He got a good start on it uh, with a couple of game-winning goals. The guy you've uh, come to count on. I don't know how much more you can say about him, huh? Well, Matt and his teammates uh, did a good job both nights. Uh, we had to win two different style of games, and there's no question that uh, you know Matt Fratton having the impact of two game winners, uh, and when you look at his entire body of work, uh, just continued to elevate himself uh, in terms of, of his standing in the Hobie Baker candidacy. Well, let's take a look at the game-winning goal against Colorado College. There it is, and Evan Trump, it looked like he blindly threw the puck out there, but no. No, that's, <laughs> a, that, that's a long backdoor cycle. It's a, it's a play that starts with Ben Blood up on the right point, and it's a long backdoor cycle, and, and Evan's putting that to an area and to a stick, and Matt Fratton made no mistake. And then uh, Evan Trump again making a great play uh, on the game-winning goal in the second overtime on Saturday night against Denver. Uh, uh, looked like he might have got tugged a little bit there, but he kept after it and got it to Che, and then uh, the rest was history. Yeah. yeah, Evan just fought through it, and he continues to make plays, and uh, that's part of the great combination of that line is uh, Malone, Trump, Fratt, and all doing something a little bit different. And then Aaron Dell was big, uh, maybe for the first time this year. He's had to win a game for you, and he certainly came up uh, with all the saves he needed to on Saturday night. Yeah, you know, as we as we went through the hockey game, the entire game, we, uh, we outchanced Denver by a couple. Uh, but, uh, you know, at times during this game, uh, there's no question that Aaron Dell uh, was uh, the guy that gave us the opportunity to win and uh, was, in my mind, the first star of the game. And then talk about this. This is, I mean, we've seen Evan Trump do some things throughout his career, including flying through the air from behind the net to bat in an overtime winner at Minnesota and several other different things, but that was borderline ridiculous. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, he just, and he comes up with it on the spot at high speed and... You know, he just made the play as it happened. He wasn't showboating. He was just making a play, and he had a great scoring opportunity off of that play. It was one of those things where a lot of people, I didn't recognize that he had picked up the puck on his stick until about the red line. And then uh, other people thought it was at the other blue line, and it turns out it's behind that at his own blue line. And then, is, then you, yeah. talk, you look. the more you look at it, he's only got one hand on it, and he's yeah. carrying it with the... It's at his, at his own blue line. It's at high speed. And uh, it's just an amazing play. Yeah, most of the coaches that I talked to after said exactly that. Come on, this doesn't happen. Well, uh, one other thing we want to touch on real quick, and that is uh, 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 the Big Ten Conference, Michigan, Minnesota, Michigan State, Wisconsin, all going into a Big Ten Conference. A quick uh, thought about that. Well, I, a couple of years. You know, I guess it's, uh, it's something that we've known is going to happen for quite some time. I'm disappointed to see it going that direction, but in saying that, uh, the University of North Dakota and, uh, and Fighting Sioux Hockey uh, will be, uh, you know, we're going to look at and make sure that uh, we are moving into the future in a great position of strength and, uh, you know, the future is very bright. You will survive. Well, he was hoping for a breakout season, but injuries have played Carter Rowney most of this season. That's something we didn't anticipate when we sat down with the one-time Alberta Junior League playoff MVP. We'll learn more in our conversation with the sophomore forward in our player profile. We'll get to that, but first, uh, look back in our Fighting Sioux history. 
He was hurt playing football at UND and decided to go out for the hockey team. Played just one game as a Sioux and then went on to an NHL career. But where is Jay Caulfield now? We'll have that answer and more when we come back. information about summer hockey camps, go to FightingSue.com or call 701-777-6595. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where personal connections matter, where classmates become friends, where leading scholars become mentors. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. for me to start my day then with a good run. There's really no other exercise that gives you the same feeling. I ran the Lincoln Marathon. It was a great experience. And the adrenaline from the crowd was amazing. If you can get yourself to go for the run, it's gonna feel good and you're gonna feel good mentally. When I help somebody, I like to ask them what they're training for and what's motivating them. I'm Missy Khan and I'm a running expert at Shields. The answer to our where are they now question, after his playing days were over, Jay Caulfield was the personal trainer for Mario Lemieux, who is now a television analyst for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Carter Rowney has a ton of potential and was recruited by UND to be an offensive force. That could happen if he stays healthy. Let's see how Carter Rowney got to UND. So with North Dakota sophomore forward Carter Rowney, Carter, we want to get to know you and uh, your roots, where you came from, and how you got to North Dakota, all right? Let's start in Sexsmith, Alberta, hometown. Uh, and when you started playing hockey, who might have been an influence for you? Uh, I just started growing up playing hockey in Sexsmith, a uh, little town, 1,500 people. So it's kind of just a little town. No one really heard of the town, I guess, in Alberta. It's uh, right by Grand Prairie. Um, growing up there, I had, you know, just playing with my friends and stuff and the family there, the support there. A lot of good support and then eventually I moved into Grand Prairie and played there and which is where I continued it on to play my juniors. A ton of 1500, everybody must have played hockey. <laughs> pretty much everyone it seems like it anyways. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all they do there. It's, um, it's a pretty a hick town, it's a cowboy town I guess. So that's, if you're not playing hockey, you're out there farming on the, on the ranch or something like that. So you had been a rancher had you not uh, decided to go with the education in a hockey way? My family didn't do the ranching, For we did the farming just like grains and stuff, harvest and stuff. We didn't do the cows and stuff, but luckily I didn't go that way. <laughs> Up at five in the morning and that whole thing, were you? Yeah, when I was young, yeah, helping on the farm, doing all that stuff too, so. So very happy to get to Grand Prairie and play hockey, huh? Yeah, going on to Grand Prairie and playing my juniors was, was pretty good to get on there. Did you play high school hockey? Um, no, back in, we don't have high school hockey there. We, uh, was, I played midgets, is what they call it there, and then I went on to juniors from there. And in Grand Prairie, you, well, actually, you had an opportunity to play another year before you came to North Dakota. What went into that decision to, uh, to uh, bypass that year? Um, I just figured, you know, I had a good year, my last year of juniors there, and I thought I was ready to make the jump and come here, and I think I was prepared to come on and do my schooling and just make the jump in the hockey level as well. So I uh, thought having that good year, and we finished off strong there in Grand Prairie, so I thought it was time to move on for my career as well. It's, school and stuff. I would guess in Alberta where a lot of North Dakota players have come from, uh, you had heard of the University of North Dakota hockey program. Yeah, it's pretty, I don't know, it's unreal school I guess, right? The program here is second to none, it's unbelievable and I actually had Kyle Radke, was, he played on the same junior team as me, so that's when I probably first heard of it 
and then from there I've always thought of the school as something else and now I'm just glad to be here. Well, everybody's glad you're here. Thanks for doing this one, Ms. Carter. Yeah. North Dakota sophomore forward, Carter Rowney. Carter Rowney will be counted on for some offense next year when the Sioux lose four outstanding forwards to graduation. The NCAA field of 16 has been set, and it includes five teams from the WCHA. The Sioux get the top seed in the Midwest region and a date with RPI in the semifinal. We'll take a look at the bracket with Coach Hackstall when we come back. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Baller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. And now, your UNDME starting lineup. Elizabeth Schleicher, senior, occupational therapy, Mandan, North Dakota. Josh Ahorn, junior in clinical lab science, Bemidji, Minnesota. Kirsten Oisher, senior, communication sciences and disorders, Gwinter, North Dakota. Dalfa John, freshman in commercial aviation, Grenada, West Indies. Be what you want at UND. Go.und.edu. is a television show produced by staff and students at the University of North Dakota. Here you actually get to do your own stories and you get to go out and talk to people and interview and learn about the cameras and everything that goes into like a live television production. I mean it's incredible. Give it a try. I mean even if you're not broadcasting communications major anything I mean it's worth it. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey with Coach Dave Hackstall. I'm Tim Hennessy. It's playoff time. NCAA field of 16 set. No surprise for you to go uh, to the Midwest Regional, is it, as the number one seed? Well, they, uh, they stayed within the, the integrity of the brackets, and uh, that's, that's where we set like up to that go. That word, integrity of the brackets. Yeah, big word. What does it mean? <laughs> Don't make me use it in a sentence other than that. All right, is it Rensselaer or is it RPI? It used to be RPI, then it was Rensselaer, and now I've seen RPI, and now I see we've got Rensselaer up there. Anyway, you play the engineers. Oh, yeah. well, tell us a little bit about them. Good skill, very good skill up front. Uh, and they've got a good mix of size and skill on the back end, uh, outstanding goaltending, and very competitive. Talk about playing uh, a 12-30 game. Well, we'll just readjust our schedule. and. Uh, you know, you, you really need to adjust that uh, five to six hours before. That's the critical time. So we'll start our work day a little bit early on Saturday, and we'll be prepared to play when the puck drops at 12.30. How about the other, uh, the other game, Western Michigan and Denver? What do you think of that one? That'd be a great matchup. Western Michigan has had a great, uh, great season uh, coming out of a good playoff run. They, uh, they lost to uh, Miami on uh, Saturday. Uh, that's going to be a great matchup. Obviously, we know all about Denver and the quality of their team, so that'll be a great matchup as well. Next target is a regional championship and on to the Frozen Four. Thanks, yes. Coach. Good luck. And we want to thank you for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. This is our final show of the season. Our thanks to all the folks who make this show possible, including our crew, our sponsors, Coach Hackstall, and especially you, the fans. On behalf of Coach Hackstall and the Sioux Hockey team, we thank you for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey.